Welcome to the very first episode of the Vegan Test Kitchen. We are cooking today manzana chili verde and jalapeno cornbread. What we're going to do first is start with the chili verde. I've never made any of the, either of these, so just keep that in mind. I'm learning with you, so this should be fun. This is what you need. One can of cannellini beans, about two Yukon potatoes, two cups of vegetable broth. You can either use this or a bouillon cube. Uh, salt, oregano, cumin, vegetable oil, garlic, two Granny Smith apples, one avocado, one yellow onion, three jalapenos, two poblano peppers, one pound of tomatillos, which amounts to about 10 uh, medium to large ones, cilantro, not this whole thing, green onions or scallions, and one lime. All right, first we're gonna check the potatoes to, what I did with these, I chopped these up to about a half inch cubes, and that's what you're supposed to chop them up to, about half an inch is what they said, so this is what we're dealing with. It might be actually a little bit smaller than it should be, but this is what we're working with. Once you can pierce it with a fork, you should be good. So what you wanna do is boil that for about 20 minutes, um, covered of course, and then I'm gonna rinse these off and drain them. Now ideally, when you're cooking those potatoes, what you wanna do is start on the other stuff, uh, which is what I'm about to do now. So what we're gonna do is chop the onions. Now what we're gonna do is put the vegetable oil, put it in the medium saucepan, we're gonna put that up to like a medium high. Let that heat up. Okay, so there's three jalapenos. We're supposed to slice them thinly and de-seed them. So that's what we're gonna do. There's probably a better way of doing this, but I don't know it. Oh, we're gonna do the poblanos too. So let me chop those up real quick. Okay, so this says to, to, to do two poblano peppers seeded and chopped into one inch pieces. So we're gonna do that. I don't know if one inch piece is like a square one inch or if it's just a one inch, I don't know. So we're just gonna go with the flow. All right, now we're gonna do the one inch pieces. Let's see what we can do. Cutting it close, but listen, cooking isn't an exact science, so just just do what you can. Hopefully it'll turn out good. All right, we have our one inch pieces. I, you know, I'm sure this isn't right, but, and I'm sure you all have opinions on how I can cut this better. <laughs> so if you do, just leave them in the comments below. Okay, now that this is all heated, we're gonna put the poblano peppers and the onions and the jalapenos. Whoops. And this is what happens all the time in my kitchen. I love making messes. Okay, so it says to saute it for about 10 minutes until it's all softened. Woo, this is gonna be spicy. All right, so while that's sauteing, we're gonna chop up the apples and onions, uh, the scallions, and um, the cilantro. It might seem weird to put apples in chili, and uh, if you do think it's weird, I, I agree with you. I think it's really weird, but it might be delicious. I know it's supposed to be like a kind of a tart, sweet, tangy chili, so um, we're, that's what we're going with. All right, so we're gonna come back to this. Everything seems to be pretty um, pretty softened by this point. We're also going to put some garlic uh, in there as well. So what we're gonna do with the garlic, um, we're gonna just smash it a little bit. You're supposed to dice it pretty fine. All right, so now we're gonna add the garlic, the cumin, the salt, and the oregano. So let's add the garlic. Let's see, the oregano, the cumin, and the salt. It's supposed to saute for one more minute. 
So while that's sauteing, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pour the vegetable broth. What you can do is um, either use this or a bouillon cube. Half a cube equals one cup, so one whole cube would equal two cups. So since this is now calling for white wine and tomatillos, we didn't even chop the tomatillos yet, so we're going to set this aside and then chop the tomatillos. So when chopping tomatillos, um, this is all brand new to me. So what you're gonna do is take the husk off. Make sure when you pick them out at the store um, that it has a greener husk. You can even peel these off at the store too just to make sure that it's good. You wanna feel it just to make sure it's firm, and not bruised. Also, that's gonna feel sticky and that's good, that's normal. Apparently the older it gets, the less sticky it gets. So. Um, it should be fairly sticky. So what we're going to do is remove these husks and then rinse the stickiness off. And then we're going to cut them into half to three quarter inch size cubes. All right, now that they're all washed, let's go ahead and chop them in half. Let's see what, let's see what that does. And we're back a couple hours later because we had a little bit of a technical uh, difficulty. So once you have your tomatillos chopped up, we're going to stick them in here in this uh, pot with the peppers and the onion and the garlic and all the spices that we've already thrown in there. Now that that is all in there, we're gonna stir it around. So right now we're supposed to add the tomatillos and the white wine. We're gonna raise the heat a little bit to let the wine reduce and the tomatillos release their juices. So about five minutes, let's put the wine in there. Let's turn the heat up a little bit. In the meantime, we're gonna get the cilantro and get a cup of it. Um, and then we're gonna put half of the cup in after this reduces a little bit and then save the other half for about 20 minutes later. So what I'm gonna do is just chop the top part. We're gonna get most of, mostly just the leaves. We'll have some of the stems in there. Cause you want a cup, you want about a cup. Uh, they said, it said loosely packed. All right, so this is still cooking. Mmm, you can smell the wine. So we're gonna cook it down just a little bit more. All right, so now what we're gonna do is add the apples. This is the two full apples. And I do apologize, they did brown a little bit because again, like I said, technical difficulties earlier, so that's why they look a little brown, but they'll still taste fine. Mix them up. And then we're gonna put, put in the vegetable broth, scallions, and the half cup of cilantro. This is the cilantro, stick that in there. This is two cups of the vegetable broth. We add the scallions. All right, we're gonna mix it up. And then we're gonna let it simmer with a with the uh, lid on for about 20 minutes. All right, now that it's been simmering for about 20 minutes, we're gonna open it up. Mmm, that smells good. I'm gonna stir it around a little bit, and now what we're gonna do is take an immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, which is one of these things, um, it's really cool because you can uh, plug it in and just blend stuff while it's in a pot. Let's see the exact wording. It says partially puree everything. So that's what we're gonna do. Try not to make a mess. I've used this like once, so we'll see. We'll see. By the way, if you don't have one of those immersion blenders, um, it's okay to put it in a normal blender, but um, per the book, it says to be careful because the steam could cause an explosion. So now that that's partially pureed, what we're gonna do is gonna taste it. Cause it said sometimes the tomatillos can be um, a little bitter. So if it is, then what we're gonna do is add a teaspoon or two of sugar because we wanna make sure it's balanced and not terribly bitter. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't think it's bitter. So now what we're gonna do is add the cooked potatoes, the beans, simmer for a few more minutes, add the cilantro and lime juice, and then we're ready to serve. So we're gonna add the potatoes. Maybe we're gonna grab the beans. What I like to do is rinse the beans, let it drain, add it, and then we're gonna let it simmer for just a few more minutes, it said. While that is simmering, I'm going to chop this lime. So it has, uh, it needs the juice of one lime. What I typically do is I'll, 
puncture it a few times. And be careful, of course, not to puncture yourself. I've also seen people roll the limes to try to get the juices mixed up inside the lime. Um, and I usually do that, but I didn't this time. All right, now that it's been simmering for a few minutes, we're gonna stir it around a little bit. And now we're gonna add the lime juice. I usually put my hand over it just in case some of the seeds come out. Then we're gonna add the remaining cilantro, mix it around a bit, and we're pretty much good to go. So all we need to do is serve it in a bowl, garnish it with the avocado and scallions, and it is ready to eat. And that's it. And now we're gonna do the cornbread. So this is the jalapeno cornbread, and you might be wondering why I'm in different clothes. I mean, you should always change your clothes if you're gonna make cornbread, that's what I always say. But, first things first, uh, I always think that it's good to drink a little wine while you're cooking. I think it helps you uh, cook better, right? So first things first, we're gonna set the oven to 350. So now that that's set, what we're gonna do is do the jalapeno topping. So this recipe is actually called skillet cornbread, and I don't get to use this very often. So I have a skillet. I'm a little worried that it's too small um, to actually put the batter in once everything's done, but we're going to try it. What we're going to do is we're going to cook the um, onions and the jalapenos on this in some oil, saute it for a little bit. So first we're going to chop up those uh, vegetables. All right, now, now that the vegetables are chopped, you want to make sure that the pan has been heated a little bit, just in, enough to till it's hot. You wanna make sure to get a, a mitt when you're dealing with this. Uh, I've burned myself before, so. All right, now that that's heated a little bit, we're gonna put some oil in there, about a tablespoon. And we're using canola oil because that's what the recipe calls for for the cornbread. Add the onions, add the jalapenos. All right, we're gonna saute these for about five minutes just so that they're, the onions um, are softened a little bit and everything's kind of uh, browned a bit. All right, I think we're looking good now. A quarter teaspoon of salt, um, it says, and then to mix it well. All right, now that that's done, it says to not rinse the, the pan because you want all that juice and oil and everything just to stay in there and it helps to not have the cornbread stick. Now what we're gonna do is mix the dry ingredients. So we're gonna combine the soy milk and vinegar in a measuring cup and set aside to curdle as you prepare everything else. That sounds disgusting, but we're gonna do it. Two cups of soy milk, and I do the plain soy milk. It says to do the plain, so I get the unsweetened, um, just the regular soy milk. And we're gonna put the apple cider vinegar in. Yes. And we're gonna let it curl. Now what we're going to do is in a large mixing bowl, all right, got the cornmeal, got the flour, sugar, baking powder, and salt. All right, now that that is pretty well mixed in, create a well in the center and then add the soy milk mixture and oil. And then it says that some lumps are okay. We're going to go ahead and create that well and right in the center, you can see that. We're going to add the soy milk. It is definitely curdled a little bit. So then we're gonna add the third cup of oil. What the hell's the third cup? Oh shit, I think it did half cup. So we're gonna add that in there. All right, now that it's pretty much mixed together, uh, it did say some lumps are okay. There are, uh, there are a few lumps in there, but it's okay. <laughs> we're gonna try to see if this is too much for this. I have a feeling it might be. Uh, Oh no, we'll be good. Oh, maybe, just barely. Actually, I'm scared. It might rise a little bit too much, but we'll see. Uh, fun fact, I've never made cornbread and I actually don't like it that much. We'll see, I don't know how much this is gonna rise. It's pretty much right at the top. It did say to put the, um, the onion and the jalapeno mixture on top. And then we're gonna stick it in the oven for about 30 to 32 minutes, very precise. 
This is making me really nervous because it's already starting to ooze out right there, which frightens me quite a bit. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to transfer this as much as possible. Oh, good lord, I'm making a huge mess. You know what? This is what happens. This is what happens in a kitchen. You're not really... Sometimes you just try things and they don't work. But we're going by the book. Well, my skillet is stupidly small, I guess. We're going to use a baking pan because it did say that in the recipe. It said if you if you don't have a skillet, you can use a baking pan. All right, it said to use a 9 by 13 baking pan. One thing I didn't do was oil or grease the pan, so hopefully it doesn't stick too much. All right, and that's going in there for 30 to 32 minutes. All right, so I think we're about done. I'm going to take it out of the oven. Yeah, that looks good. We're gonna let it cool for a few minutes, and then we're gonna cut it and serve it, and we're good. All right, now that it's cooled for a few minutes, we are going to, <laughs> like I said, I uh, didn't oil this pan because I was planning on using the skillet first. It's a little sticky, but you know what? Let's just taste it. So we'll, good lord. All right, so this is the finished product of the cornbread, the jalapeno cornbread. Uh, like I said, it did stick to the pan a little bit, so you might want to oil that up if you don't use a skillet. But other than that, we're done. We're ready to eat. So I hope you liked everything that you saw today. Uh, be sure to subscribe because we're going to have a lot more videos to come. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.